Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are in chapter 14 looking at the serial communication capability of the MSP430. We've officially switched over to the C programming language, and we're looking at our first serial standard, which is the UART. And we're going to start off by looking at the UART transmit capability. And in this video, we're going to look at how to configure the uh, registers associated with the UART. And um, that's it. All right, so let's remember what we have here. Uh, the, per the serial peripheral on the MSP430 has two of these EUSCIs, Universal Serial Communication Interfaces, that support a built-in UART standard, okay? And they are A0 and A1. Both of them have the following block diagram. And so there's two of these that are completely separate. And now remember, both of these ESCIs can be configured to either be UART or uh, SPI, but I'm only gonna show you what, it, what this UART circuitry looks like. Okay, so remember you have uh, a clock, or well actually you have a buffer, a parallel buffer where you put information, it is then moved into a shift register and that forms kind of the, the standard parallel to serial conversion and that shifts out on a TX. And then you have a bunch of framing configurations that you can that you can set up for the UART and this whole buffer and settings thing. This handles uh, getting the bit stream in the form of a UART. Okay, the clock for it is going to be generated by this little clock circuitry that allows you to pick which source clock you're going to use. So you have the choice of either a pin on the MCU or you can use a clock or SM clock. It actually has SM clock in here twice. That's just the way it's wired up. So you basically either toggle between these two, A clock or SM clock. But remember that you have to use common baud rates. So there's this baud rate generator circuit that takes these kind of provided clocks that come from a different source, from crystals or on-chip uh, clock generation circuits, and you create a clock that is associated with one of these common UART baud rates. So 9600 up to 115200. Okay, so that's kind of the, the, that's how it looks. The basic concept of configuring the UART for use is to configure the, the baud rate. Okay, and that's done by choosing your clock and doing these configuration register settings in here to get the appropriate clock. And then you set up kind of the framing associated with the, you know, how you're going to actually build up the UART bit sequence. And then what you do is you drop a value into the buffer. So you just write something to this transmit buffer and it automatically, as soon as you write to it, it shifts it into here and it shifts the thing out. Then in addition to that, there's this state machine that not only handles kind of the operation of shifting out uh, the information and applying the frame settings, but it also has flags in here, and, it, and it's not just a flag, one flag. It, there's a whole bunch of flags in here that give you information about the UART transmission. So it has stuff like, is the buffer empty? Is the buffer in process? Is it done? Uh, is it ready? Was there corruption? So there's a whole bunch of flag settings in here that you can use to generate interrupts and track what's happening, okay? All right, so the recommended procedure to set up the UART consists of the following. There's going to be this bit called the UCSWRST. It stands for Universal Communication uh, UC, which basically is the USCI. Then it's Software Reset. And there is a bit in this control register called the Control Word Zero Register. And what they want you to do is they want you to put the UART into reset, okay? And they do that so that you can configure all of the settings and not have the UART accidentally start shifting information out. Because there might be a situation where if it was enabled and you were going in and setting up the frames or something like that, it might accidentally get an edge on the transmit buffer that would cause the thing to start shifting information out. So to prevent that, it you have to put it into reset, then this next step is to configure all your settings. So you're gonna have all these different UART configuration settings that you're gonna do and then it's ready to go. But then you also have to configure the ports. And you might say, how, why do I have to configure ports? Well, remember this peripheral, the serial, you know, the transmit pin, let's just think about that from the UART. It is sharing the pin with other features of the MCU. 
And remember that by default, all the pins will default out a reset to their port usage or their port function. So we have to go in and manually change the port select, port function select register to tell each pin that we're going to use for a UART, hey, switch over from a port to a UART. Once you do that, then you take out the, you take the system and you, you put it out of reset. So you go back to the same bit and you take it out of reset and now you're ready to go. Once you have that done, then you can configure any optional uh, interrupts that you might want to use. And then after that, you basically just drop information into the transmit buffer and it goes. It just pumps it out. And, it, and it's, it's pretty awesome because it does a lot of sophisticated uh, functionality for you. And you once you get it all set up, all you're really doing is dropping information in the transmit buffer and then watching flags or setting up flags to trigger interrupts to handle the, the timing of what's going on. Okay, here we go. Take a deep breath. <laughs> here are the configuration registers associated with the UART system on the MSP430. <laughs> when you look at this, it's overwhelming, okay? Because we these this is a lot of configuration registers. When we started looking at peripherals, they all kind of worked the same way, but we started slow. So we started with the digital IO, the ports, and it was like, okay, I understand how they work. And they had a couple configuration registers. You know, they had the direction register, they had the resistor enable, you know, uh, just a couple. Then we went to timers and timers had a lot more configuration registers and, but it was okay, we got it through it. And now you're up to the UART and it's like, holy cow, look at all these registers. <laughs> so here's the only thing that I'll say, don't worry about it. Because what we're going to do is the way we're going to learn this is we're going to go in and set up the bare minimum number of settings just to get it to work. And once we do that, then you can go back on, you know, and if you desire, try to turn on some of the more advanced features. OK, and so when you look at this, you can see there's some control word registers. These are going to be settings, baud rate control, modulation control. These two registers are, are how you set up the, the baud rate, obviously. Status, these are gonna hold some status flags. Then you have the transmit buffer that you see. There's also a receive buffer, of course, because it's gonna receive. Then you got some other ones that are auto baud rate control and IRDA, you know, I haven't used these, honestly. And then you got some that are for more familiar. You got interrupt enable, interrupt flag, and interrupt vector. So these three are how you get the interrupt set up, okay? Now notice that they're totally separate registers from each other. And that's because you don't just have one flag. Okay, it's not just one UART flag that can trigger one UART interrupt. There's a whole bunch of flags in here that can trigger multiple interrupts that will, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, so let's just look at the bare minimum, okay? We're gonna start off by looking at the uh, control word register zero, okay? And notice that the name of it is UCAXCTLW0. The X stands for whether you're using A0 or A1. The A, you know, notice, remember that the MSP430 has an A and a B. So it's got A0, B0, A1, B1. Well, the UART only exists on the A0 and A1. So that's why we're able to write UCA and then control word register zero. And so that X is either going to have a zero or a one in it, depending on which of the peripherals you're using. But there's a whole lot of bits in here that get us really close to being able to run. First and foremost, let's look at what settings in here come out a reset ready to use for, for just a basic UART. First and foremost, it's in UART mode to begin with. There's two uh, kind of bits bit settings in here, UC mode and UC sync. And this is how you change the thing between UART and SPY. And so first of all, you have asynchronous and then you have synchronous. That's how you switch it between UART and SPY. Well, out of reset, it's already in UART mode. So that's great. And then when you come up to this UC mode, it's also defaulting in the UART mode. The reason you have uh, these other settings in the UC mode is because if you went into the SPY interface, then you have to go in here and you have to manually set which of the SPY modes you're looking at. And we, we're not looking at that right now. So by default, this peripheral is in UART. So we, we don't have to set this up. We just go, hey, we're gonna use it. Another thing that's set up for us is the framing. So if you think about just a standard frame, a standard UART frame, if you go through these settings, these are all out of reset in one of the most common frames that you might see. For example, it doesn't have a parity, so no parity bit. 
since there's no parity, you don't have to choose whether it's even or odd. We have LSB first, which is the most common UART frame. The default is eight bits, which is also the most common. And then it's got one stop bit. So if we don't, we, when we come out of reset, we don't have to set any of these and we get the most standard UART frame that you usually see in computers. So that's nice. One thing, the things we do have to worry about though are this. Here's the UCS or the UC software reset. This is bit zero and it's got a bit mask here. And this is how we put the UART system into reset while we configure it. Now, make sure that you understand the logic here. It's kind of an interesting thing because you see how it's got zero and one. You would usually think that you would uh, put it as a zero. That it, No, that if you, it was one, it would be in reset. Uh, and, well, actually, if it's at a zero, it's ready to go. And if it's at a one, it's it's... Not, no, it, it, you would think that if you put a one in there, it's ready to go. But the way that this works is you're enabling a reset, okay? You're not enabling the UART. So if you want to put it in reset, you actually write a one to this, okay? And that enables the reset. And if you want to take it out of reset, you write a zero to it. So we, we'll see that as we do program examples as we go. But that's just the logic that's in here. The other one in this uh, register is the clock source. So this is where we get to choose between either the pin on the MCU, A clock or SM clock. And that's cool. So we get to choose which clock we're gonna have. And then there's just a whole bunch of kind of, I wouldn't call it advanced, but just other stuff that usually in standard UARCs you don't use. So it's for example, here's your address bit if you happen to use one. Uh, is there a break between frames? Is it dormant? Is there a receive erroneous character? So there's some some settings that I, I guess I just classify them as advanced that you, t you don't usually use when you do a standard UART, but they're in this register. Okay, once we configure that, we've configured the frame, we've got a lot of stuff going here, we've got the clock source selected, then you have to figure out how to set up the baud rate generator to, conf to give us a clock that corresponds to one of these uh, baud rates. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna split that out into another video because it's complicated enough that it'll make this video too long. So I'm gonna have a separate video specifically on how you configure these two registers to get the baud rate that you need. But just be, just know you have to go into these two registers and put values in there in order to get the correct baud rate clock, okay? All right, once we get that, that's all the UART settings. And then we have to go and do the port settings. And here is the big table that allows you to choose what function a pin is. Remember, we haven't had to do this before because we've always been using uh, ports. And so the default is for a pin as a port. But now we're gonna change the function on a pin. So let's take a look at this. If you look at, let's look at uh, A0. So the serial peripheral A0. It has the ability to be a UART or a SPI, but the UART TX and RX, they are hard coded to pins. So TX is hard-coded to port 1 bit 7, and RX is hard-coded to port 1 bit 6. If you go to A1, TX is hard-coded to port 4 bit 3, UART is hard-coded to port 4 bit 2. The way that you choose the function for the pin to go from a port over to the UART is using these port function select registers. There's two bits, and so you'll see, like for example, if I was doing port 1, you go port one, select one, and port one, select zero. And then it's bit seven in each of them, and that corresponds to the bit seven of port one. And if you put it at this setting, it just happens to be if you do a zero one there, that will switch from using port uh, this pin for, it won't be port one bit seven anymore, it'll be the TX for the UR. And the same thing for if we want to use the RX, you have to go into port one, select one, port one, select zero, bit six, and put a setting of zero one. Down here, if we wanted to use the UART for A1, we would go to port four, select one, and port four, select zero registers. These are two configuration registers. And we would go to bit three to choose the TX function for this pin. And then we would choose uh, bit two for RX, and the values we write are zero, one, zero and one, zero and one. So those, that's how we actually configure the ports, okay? And, and when I say ports, it's basically taking the pin function out of port default. Once you have that, then you go back and you disable the reset using the uh, UC software reset pin or bit, 
and then you're ready to go. And all you do is you really just drop information into, into this transmit buffer and it shifts it out. And there you go. Now, the transmit buffer is, is actually a buffer. Uh, it's actually just a register. It's got an address and everything, and it's got a bit, bit mask or a bit name that's configured in the header file. It's 16 bits, but you only use the bottom eight. And so the way that it looks in the data sheet is you have the top eight bits are reserved and you just write a byte to the register. And once you do, it's off and running. And what's kind of cool is there's a flag that tracks whether it's being shifted out or whether uh, it's ready for another byte. And so that's how you handle not just continually writing to this buffer before the prior value had been shifted completely out. So that's the settings for it. Okay, that's just a, an overview of how to get a, a generic UART set up and ready to go. Uh, rem remember, we still have to look at a little bit of detail on how to get the actual baud rate clock for our system, but that's it. Uh, all right, so good job. <laughs> all right, as always, remember, support my channel by subscribing and see.